Oh, yes, that, that's really important. I'm Beverly Ahrens. <laughs> um, and the project, um, this, this game is, we don't have a name. It's, you know, the name of the original game was Evicted, but we're thinking of calling it Rent, the, the Rent Hike or something like that, or Rent the Hikening, <laughs> which was like some pun or something Dakota came up with. And so it is basically where the player um, is playing a renter and uh, you are, you're, you have a little family, you have a partner, you have a little toddler that lives with you in this one bedroom apartment. Everything's going well, you're just making it, you're, you're living hand to mouth, day to day, paycheck to paycheck. And one day you come home and bam, you're hit with a rent hike. But it's not just one rent hike. The, the landlord says, you know what, your rent is going up. $100 the first month, $200 the next month, $300 the next month, $500 the next month. Because you know what, I want you out of here. Because I can rent this place out more for more money, but I can't just kick you out because we have a just cause eviction law in Seattle. In other words, I need a just cause to get you out. So I know you can't afford this rent. So I'm gonna jack it up. I'm gonna keep it going up, bam, bam, until I push you out. This family, this character goes and they look for another place to live, but they can't find any place. They can't find any place that's affordable that will take them and their little girl, right? They can't find any place to live. So they're stuck there in that apartment, paying that rent every month that rent's going up because you know what they can jack it up they can jack it up as much as they want as long as they give you the proper notice right if it's over 10 10 percent you got 60 days notice that's all right it's going up three thousand dollars in uh three months what you gonna do about it you can't do anything about it because that is the way the laws are written here in this city and in this state in a state that makes it illegal to put, put in place rent control so little old ladies can be pushed out of their homes and onto the street because they can't afford $2,000 a month rent. So that's what this game's about. You get to play this renter, you get to see what it's like to be a renter with no place to go, forced to pay rent that's going up over and over again. You and your spouse and your little kid paying it, paying it, paying it. You can't get a better job. You're faced with tough choices because nothing pays you enough. You got a job that you call, you're on call, you say, oh, I'm ready to work today. And they call you in when they need you. You're looking for work. You know, sometimes you may have to make tough decisions. Sometimes you may not pay the electricity. Sometimes you may not buy food. And so these are the things that you have to, to make a decision about in this game. Wow, sounds pretty intense. Yeah, it is intense. And you know what's so funny is that originally, so Amy was the one who kind of pitched um, the idea of like having inset characters. And I really liked that idea. And so we brought her on our team for that reason. But then we started talking about it and we were like, we want to you know, create empathy. And Jim, who is our legal guy, who has been helping with concept and some of the writing, um, he, uh, wanted, he, he really brought in the idea of like, we want the player to empathize with this character. You can't really, you put distances, it's distance there if you make that character an insect. So we, we went, we got away the, you know, left the insect idea alone and made, the, made actual human faces so that people could see another human being and see that this is a human being that is going through this so that they can connect with that. So it is intense and it's gonna be an intense um, experience, but there will be some humor. You know, like there's this one scenario where you have an opportunity to take in a pet. And so, you know, you, you're, you're in the kitchen making breakfast for your family and all of a sudden you hear this meowing coming from outside in the alleyway and your little toddler runs up to the window and goes, kitty cat, kitty cat, you know, pointing at the kitty cat outside. And you look out and there's this mangy looking cat 
with like all these fleas jumping on it and everything. And you have to decide, are you gonna adopt that cat? You know, if you adopt that cat, it's gonna cost you money. You gotta get, the, gotta get rid of those fleas, right? You gotta feed that cat. Your daughter, if you get it, your daughter will be happy. It'll increase because like in our game, we have stress levels and health levels. So like depending on your, your choices, the family stress level will go up and down. Depending on your choices, your income will go up and down. So in this case, you, you're gonna have like a deduction of income if you take in that cat because it's maintenance to take care of that cat, right? But your little girl will be happy and happy to see your family go up. So, you know, it's kind of like those types of like, you know, I feel like it's like a little bit of humor, kind of dark humor, but it's still, you know, something in there that's like that. That's not, it's not all dark. <laughs> nice. Well, it sounds like there's a good mixture in there. Um, can I have you say your name one more time? Because when you did introduce yourself, it was uh -huh. off of a laugh, so it was super okay. loud. Okay. Beverly Aarons. I'm Beverly Aarons. Um, I'm a writer. I am, uh, I've been involved with games now, trying to develop games and putting together concepts and working on teams for two years now. And so I actually did create one puzzle game demo with a group of, um, with one other developer and a visual artist. Uh, the game, we just have a demo. We never actually completed it because I think it was too big. And so now this is like, the second, well, I have other games that I, you know, kind of mapped out, and um, and so I would say, but this is the second team that I've been on where we've we've created something, and I think that by the end of, of tomorrow we'll have a playable product. And some of those people, we're going to continue on after this is over and continue to develop this game into its completion. Nice. Can, what do you think about this game jam having the theme of being uh, social justice and teaching people about the law? I love that. You know, I, I think that a lot of people don't understand the law. In the case of renters, a lot of renters don't understand their rights. Um, especially in today's current environment, they may find themselves faced with various issues that they don't know how to deal with. Some unscrupulous landlord may decide to give them a rent hike without proper notice. And they may not even realize that it's improper notice. So a game like this can show them, a show them, not tell them, but show them what is the law? What is right? What is wrong? What do you do? So a, a, a game jam like this is a great because it allows teams to come together and create a game, but it also produces something of value, a public good uh, for the community. And it gives, um, it gives people a fun way, or at least an engaging way, and an and, and accessible way for them to learn about the law as it relates to their personal life. Because how many people are going to like go to the law website and start looking up Washington State legal codes. Nine times out of ten, the average person isn't going to do that. So if you can frame the law, frame your rights, information about consumer rights, debtor rights, renter rights, in a game or in some type of media that is engaging, you can get across that valuable information to the people who need it. That's brilliant. I mean, it's a perfect reason why to participate in a creative endeavor like this. What do you think about having people who are not generally associated with game jams here, primarily the law people? I love that idea. I don't, you know, I've only ever been to one other game jam, and that was for board games. I do belong to developers group, and I, one of the things that I've seen is that there aren't a lot of um, intersections of different people coming together. Sometimes you just have only developers there and maybe some vi visual arts people and audio people. But the idea of bringing in legal professionals in to guide that process who are not necessarily involved in games is, 
I think has created an opportunity for really extraordinary things to happen, you know? Yeah. Nice. Um, do you have any closing comments or anything else that, you know, has stuck out to you in particular about this game jam so far? Um, this is an extremely organized game jam. I'm very grateful for the organizers that put it together. The people are great, um, very pleasant to work with, professional, skilled, uh, talented individuals. And I feel like um, I would definitely do this again. I give it five stars. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's all I want to say. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you very much, Beverly. You're welcome. This